All right. Hey, um, you guys got this handout here, the Bureau of Labor Statistics news release. So this is the uh, unemployment report here for October 2010. So that's something you're going to be taking a look at. But I copied some of the tables from that. Um, but I also copied something that wasn't from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It was from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. And that's copied there on the back side there from www.bea.gov. That's where they calculate GDP. They have all the GDP reports, a lot of other economic data there. Now, what I really wanted to do here is you got this in front of you so because it's hard to see there, right? Oh, unless I come in real close there. I guess there you can see it. But you got it in front of you. I'm just going to make some reference to some things so we can have a better understanding. Now, you guys know from the definition of GDP, market value of all final goods and services produced in a country in a given year. So that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're trying to remember what's included and what's not included. Okay. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is back from our expanded circular flow diagram, what are the categories of spending that add up to GDP? Now, these categories of spending are not GDP itself, but it's an identity because spending equals income. That happens to equal the value of the goods and services produced. We see that from the circular flow diagram. So those identities there allow us to say GDP is C plus I plus G plus NX, Cygnix. Now, we want to go into a little bit more depth there. Those two concepts kind of come together here, and then we can take it to another level. When we're considering some different things, whether they're in GDP or not in GDP, we really kind of got to think of what they would go under. So, you know, let's take a look here at that uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, I'm sorry, not the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BEA, Bureau of Economic Analysis. First couple of things to notice, and you should know this for the, for the big quiz, is what's, what was U.S. GDP for 2009? Now, it's not important to memorize all these numbers, but I do want you guys to know this one particularly because it's going to give you a benchmark. It's going to give you something to know how things have changed. Okay, so you know you're going to look at stuff. You're going to, just like when we learned those foreign exchange rates or the major currencies; those are all going to change. But it's good to have kind of an idea of what the magnitude of some of these numbers are. When you start talking trillions, billions, and trillions, people are so confused that they, they just stop paying attention. And so I think it's important for you to see where what these are relatively. So 2009, nominal GDP, $14.119 trillion. $14.1 trillion. Okay? So on the table there, you're looking at that and you're going, wait, that's not what it says. But if you look at the top, it says billions of dollars. So all these statistics are in billions of dollars. But you also notice... There's a couple of columns, billions of current dollars. That means using the current year prices. Those are nominal figures, nominal GDP. If you look over, though, on the next one, it says billions of chained $2,005. Now, there's been some changes in the way that they'll do the real GDP to kind of adjust there for the prices, and so they use this chaining mechanism. Don't worry about that. For, all our, for our purposes, just think 2005, that's the base year. That's the year that they held constant, okay? Which means what? That is the real GDP. How much our GDP this year would have been worth in 2005. So it allows us to make some comparisons, okay? But we're really looking at what's included, what's not included. Those are a couple things to note. But take a look here. Personal consumption expenditures, Okay, C, that's the C we were talking about. $10 trillion. So $10 trillion of the $14 trillion is consumption expenditures. Now, under consumption, there are three subcategories that I want you to know. Consumption, we have durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. So if you see there, durable goods, motor vehicles and parts, furnishings, recreational goods, but the non-durable goods, that's stuff like food and beverages, clothing and footwear. I know some people sometimes tell me, well, I wear my shoes for a long time. They're not necessarily non-durable. They lasted a long time. Um, but these are things that wear out in a relatively short time. Not like a car. A car is going to last longer than your tennis shoes will. Okay. 
Um, so you got durable goods and the non-durable goods. Services. So right there, we have transportation services, recreation services, food services, financial services, uh, health care services, housing services. Housing is a tricky, tricky one here, okay, because housing is not a house. Remember what I said before. Capital is machines, tools, and factories. A house is a factory. Yeah, it's a factory. Because that house produces housing services. So we've got to separate the capital from the service that that capital produces. If I said that we were providing hotel services and letting people rent the rooms, that doesn't mean that they get the building. So that, that maybe give you something to kind of connect that to. So houses are an investment good. It's capital that produces housing services. Now, if you bought a house and you rented it out to somebody, there will be a market value for those rental services that you're providing. And that's easily calculated and put into GDP. That's a little bit tricky here because if everyone's renting, our GDP is high. But if we have owner-occupied housing, well, then that's not going to be included in GDP. We need to account for that. So what we do is when we have owner-occupied housing, we figure out what the, the average rent is within an area, and we impute the value. So we actually do include that, even though no transaction took place. So that's a little tricky one. That's going to contradict some of the things that we said. But that's an important one to remember. Housing services are going to be included, which is different from a house, but also owner-occupied housing is going to get put in there. And you might think, well, gosh, why are you contradicting? But it's so important. Housing is such a huge, huge component that if we didn't account for that, then we could all simply move next door. All the owner-occupied houses, they could switch houses and then pay rent, and all of a sudden GDP is higher. But we don't have more housing. That's the thing. We're really trying to capture how much stuff we have. Okay, now that technique, though, is more difficult to do with some things that have smaller values or values that are more difficult to ascertain. Okay, but in these cases, we have rental rates, and it's easy to say, hey, well, there's this area, and this is what the going rent is in that area. I want to include that. Okay, so that's, that's what we got under consumption. Durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. Under investment, gross private domestic investment. Again, three categories okay fixed business investment fixed residential investment and then changes in private inventories so it says they're fixed investment if you take a look underneath it says non-residential that's the fixed business investment that i'm referring to that's structures that's the factories that's buildings uh the office buildings equipment and software industrial equipment transportation equipment so that's the that's the investment goods that firms are purchasing. But if you look under it, it says residential. Residential. These are buildings that we've built for people to live in, for housing services. That would include condominiums, uh, houses, uh, any of these uh, you know, single-family dwellings, duplexes, whatever. That's under residential investment. So fixed business investment, fixed residential investment. And then that other one, the change in business inventories, that's another tricky one here. Because remember, we said that GDP is what's produced in a given year. And if there's a good that's produced in a given year on, say, December 31st, but it's not sold until January 31st, then that's a problem. Because it needs to be counted in December. It needs to be counted in the previous year's GDP. And so what we need to do in that case is count that as investment. You go, how do you count that as investment? You count that as investment because it's adding to the inventory. So it's a change in the business inventory. That's an investment in their inventory for the following year. we got my landlord here. We were just talking about housing services and paying rent. And my landlord just walked in. 
He's asking for the check right now.